What is good friends, back with more smoke on Snake Draft this time, Eternum vs Eternal Spirit and looking at the team's Mega Alakazam, uh, AV Tangros to help with Ash Greninja, help with Zygarde, help with Opposing Alakazam, Tren looks to be a uh, Rocks variant, most likely Leftovers, could be bulky Tren or it could be also Offensive Tren, but it looks to be definitely Leftovers and then Z-Move is either on this or on this, if this is the Z-Move user this could be Specs. If um, this is the Z-Move user, this could be um, maybe Metronome. I don't know what other item you would run if you don't run Z-Move. I guess Expert Belt is an option, but that sounds kind of whack. And then Landris looks to be the Scarfer with U-Turn, Earthquake, Defog, and then Filler Move. Like either HPI, Stone Edge, or Explosion in the last slot. Uh, this team looks kind of weak to Halucha, so maybe it's Explosion. And yeah, on the Tunnel Spirit side, it looks to be Bulky Rocks, Mega Diancy. Um, I think also Scarf Landers, but it could also be Scarf Gren, but Scarf Lander is more likely. Uh, Z-Move could be on the Gren or on the Curum is what I'm thinking, but I'm not sure. And most likely an AV Tangrowth. Then the Celestia is probably just a bulky variant. And yeah, uh, Blacephalon looks kind of dangerous for Eternal Spirit. I mean, Greninja can switch in once. Uh, the Anzi and... Lando can outspeed it if it's not Scarf, but it looks to be scary. Eternum Spirit gets off the Intimidate first, which means this is either a speed tie or Eternum's Lando is slower. I assume we're gonna see U-Turn exchange turn 1 here, which means this is good for Eternum because he's probably gonna get a slow U-Turn on the NC. So now um, Tangrowth is an option here, because I don't think Alakazam can Oko the NC. And the thing is, he has to be careful because that Kyurem in the back looks really scary and he does not have good... He does not have switch-ins for Kyurem. Um, so like... I don't know what you want to do here if you turn him. Like you might want to pull a double that covers the DNC and uh, that covers the Curum, but you also might want to attack because Eternal Spirit is insane. Dude, what the fuck is it? Eternal Spirit is so wild. He, he just stays in again. He gives no fucks. Like I know, I know that his DNC stayed in regular form and it would have lived the Giga Drain. But DNC getting chipped means Blacephalon can be dangerous. I don't know if I like that play. I know he has a um, Greninja. But I personally would not have made that play. So now he just earthquakes. And um, Eternum Spirit is freely click U turn here to get momentum. Um, Eternum is locked into earthquake. If Eternum switches, Eternum Spirit now gets momentum with a U turn. Uh, if Eternum stays in, that means he will be locked into earthquake, which means Eternum Spirit gets a free switch uh, into his Celestia. So he did stay into earthquake again, uh, which means he didn't want to go Tangros on a U turn because that would have just let the Curum in and he does not have counterplay to Curum. So I understand his play. But yeah, there was nothing to do. Like Eternal Spirit was gonna get momentum that turn. Now Eternal Spirit could pull a double into Kyurem here because Tangros or Heatran is most likely the play for Eternum, one of the two. Uh, Tangros is an option because it can block Leech Seed from Celestila and can scout for the Celestila having Earthquake. But um, I don't know if he wants to go Tangros because of the potential double into the Kyurem. As he does just go for Earthquake, but even the Heatran on the switch, so he did have coverage for the Heatran. Yeah, I knew that either Heatran or Tang would come out, so I thought double into Kyurem was the play, but since he had Earthquake, that was also a fine play, because if Tangrowth comes out, um, he can still threaten Eternum with that Kyurem in the back, right? And if Heatran comes out, it would've just died to the Earthquake. Also, he gets an attack boost, which makes me think the Celestia is most likely offensive, and this changes things. I was thinking um, either Gren or Kyurem is the Zeme of user, now I'm thinking this is probably the Zeme of user. So Blacephalon comes out, which I'm thinking is probably Specs, and Eternal Spirit's only play here is, I think, Hard Greninja, which can take any one hit because it resists both of the stabs from Blacephalon. And now we will see from the damage what type of Blacephalon this is. Fire Blast comes out, does a lot. Does a little bit less than I was expecting, though. So, is he Modest Scarf or is he Specs but not next special attack? I'm not sure about that yet. And yeah, um, he probably wants to go on a High Dragon here because I don't think he wants to go on a Tangros because Tangros is always risky in case Eternal Spirit doubles in the Curum. Uh, even though if the Curum is plus speed nature and the High Dragon is modest, which is the most common High Dragon set, then Curum outspeeds it anyway. Um, but yeah, he does just go to Tangrowth. Uh, High Dragon is kind of annoying for Eternal Spirit. Yeah, it does a Flash Cannon. I was gonna say he probably has either Flash Cannon or Off Power or maybe even both. Um, so Eternal Spirit could not go hard into Diancy there. And yeah, um, I guess Eternal Spirit is just gonna click HP IC and get some chip on the High Dragon. Uh, Eternum is free to either flash can again just in case eternal spirit wants to pivot into the Yancy, or you can also click dark pulse here it does just flash can again i assume we see our hpis exactly now eternum is kind of forced to go for roost here because um he still wants this high dragon around uh so eternal spirit is either gonna hpis again or he could try to get the curum or the Yancy in on a roost 
I don't remember exactly, but I think Kyurem is base 95 and Hydreigon is base 98. But Eternal Spirit can calculate the damage, and if he sees that the flash can tell him the 20% tells him that's modest High Dragon, then he knows that his QM definitely outspeeds the High Dragon. Um, but yeah, if I'm wrong about the speed tiers, let me know in the comments because I'm not 100% sure. Uh, I assume he's just gonna roost because he doesn't want to lose the High Dragon, and Eternal Spirit, like I said, can either HP ice or try to pivot into his QM or the NC, which is risky though. So I think he's just gonna HP ice again as there's the roost. There's the HP ice. I mean. Eventually, I think he's gonna have to sack either the Tangrowth or try to pivot into either Kyurem or the Yanti on Ruth. And yeah, he might just sack this because he really doesn't have a good counter for this. So he can either Ruth again here or attack. He probably wants to attack um, with either Dark Pulse or Flashkin again. I could see him going for Dark Pulse here. And yeah, this is definitely confirmed Z move at this point, just from the way this has been played. Uh, Cory also used a set like this. It was Ruth, Flashkin, Earth Power, and Dark uh, Pulse. As he does reveal um, Darkinium Z and does get a crit, um, I think that might have mattered. Tangrowth could have probably lifted that on like maybe 5 or 10%, but... Well, I don't know on how much health it would have lifted, but it could have maybe barely lifted it. But I don't think it's gonna change the outcome of the game, like... I don't know why he said alas, that's, that was like baby hex, like that, that's not gonna come into play. So the Yancy can force out the High Dragon here. Um, Eternum can either go into the Tangrowth or... Um, I don't know, Landris doesn't really want to take a Moonblast, so yeah, Tangrus comes out and gets Special Attack Drop, which is really annoying, because now Giga Drain doesn't do that much. I still wouldn't I still wouldn't stay in here if I'm Eternal Spirit. You have to be careful about the Blacephalon in the back, which is, uh, I think, Specs, but it's not Max Special Attack, so it might actually be Specs Speed Boosting, which can run through his team if he doesn't pay attention, if he loses the Greninja, and if, like... Wait, the NC is 110 base, right? I don't remember the speed here. Yeah, yeah, the NC outspeeds Blacephalon. So as long as he has it around, he cannot speed the Blaze, unless the Blaze gets a speed boost. Which, I don't know if it is that yet, but if it is that speed boosting set, but I don't think it's Scarf Modest, because the Lando is already Scarf, right? So, um, he still has to be careful about the Curum coming in here, so... I don't think he's gonna Giga Drain. Oh, he does he? Oh, what does he go for? Giga Drain, okay. I was gonna say, um, maybe... Honestly, that was a hard turn for Eternum. I understand why he Giga Drained, because Eternal Spirit has shown that he likes to stay in on everything. Not only in this game earlier with the NC on Tang, but earlier he wasn't Megat. Okay, now he could stay in because of the special attack drop. But yeah, Blasaphalon does look a bit dangerous. I'm not the biggest fan of letting the NC get chipped, but I guess the NC outspeeds it, so he is okay. So let's go into Landers, they're expecting um, either an Earthquake or something along those lines. Uh, Eternal makes a really good double into Alakazam, because this covered Eternal Spirit going into Kyurem, especially if the Kyurem is minus Spadef, I'm not sure if it is, then Focus Blast would definitely Oku it. Or if he's modest, he might also be able to Oku the Kyurem. Now we can just get the Intimidate off, and I think you Focus Blast here, just because it hits the Celestia the hardest. It kills the Greninja, because Greninja could potentially come out and threaten to kill you with Water Shuriken, and it also... Like, Focus Blast hits everything, because it's obvious that Eternal Spirit is going to go for a U-turn this turn. And since you have the... you trace the Intimidate, so staying in is a completely fine play. I guess another option for Eternum is going for Recover this turn. Um, but I think Focus Blast is the play. I don't think Eternal Spirit wants to go hard into Celestila though, because he turned out to be offensive Celestila. That's what we saw since he got an attack boost earlier when he killed the Heatran, which means probably Zemo wants Celestila live up on Kyurem, and then... Um, Oh yeah, we already know the Greninja is most likely specs from the damage on Hydreigon, as he does Focus Blast, um, which is the play to make, and he does connect. Goes on Landris again, and he's gonna U-turn, and I think the Alakazam is still useful, so he's either gonna switch out to his own Landris, or he's gonna sack off his Hydreigon here. As uh, Eternal Spirit is definitely just gonna click U-turn, and Eternum does sack off the Hydreigon. Now, what do you go to here? Um, Deancy, um, yeah, this is gonna Deancy. Which means uh, Alakazam can come out, or Landris can come out. I think he wants to go Alakazam here. Because if you go Landris, you don't want to do that. Because if you... No, you can't go Landris and go for Earthquake, because then Celestia gets free setup. So he goes into his own Landris, knowing that he can live any one hit, as he goes for Shadow Ball. Um, which would have killed Yancy from that range and would have hit Celestia harder than uh, Psychic would have. Even though I think I would have potentially Psychic there because I don't think he wants to go hard into Celestia since the Celestia is offensive. Now Eternal Spirit is just going to U-turn again as Eternum goes into his own Landris. But this means um, the, the Celestia can come out and set up Autotomize on this. And since the Blacephalon is not Scarf, I'm pretty sure the Celestia outspeeds it after Autotomize. I think otherwise um, I would have to pull out the Calx because if the 
Scarf, if Persephone was Scarf Timid, it could potentially outspeed Celestia after Autotomize. I'm not sure. If you guys know the speeches, again, let me know. But he rocks in a Defog, and now he's gonna Autotomize, yeah. And the reason why he Defogged, obviously, is so that Persephone can potentially live a hit. So he goes in a Tangled as he's just gonna Heavy Slam. That does so much damage, and he wants to switch back here, obviously, into Landorus to get the Intimidate off, and he doesn't want to give it that Beast boost. I mean, he kind of has to give it... Okay, he goes back into this. Like, he kind of has to give it a beast boost. I don't think he can really prevent that. Um, so, I don't remember how healthy the Landris is. If He's either going to sack the Tang here, or if Landris can pivot back and intimidate and live another one, then could have also been the play. And now, since this already shot off, this already shot Earthquake, and it's at neutral, I'm pretty sure Blacephalon would die to an Earthquake. Because Blacephalon already took one um, Rocks switch in. So even if Blacephalon has some bulk investment, Eternum needs um, to drop the Celestia, the Celestia's attack, otherwise he cannot um, live a hit with the Blacephalon. I'm not sure if this is Ground Z or if this is um, Steel Z Celestia, but yeah, that was an obvious pivot back into Landris, predicting the Earthquake to come out. Um, good play there, but like, okay, he does show Explosion. Yeah, I was thinking that because he's weak to Halucha and that might help with that. And it also helps like was this stuff like DD Gyarados to bop that. And you don't risk missing Stone Edge. I mean it's just a nuke move with a certain um, month that can be dangerous. And yeah, if you need it to hit, like Stone Edge can miss explosion is always guaranteed. And if you land with a slow, you can usually afford to go for it sometimes. So now um Blacephalon has to come out, because Zem obviously cannot beat this. Pretty sure well, yeah, Zem is Zem is slower after the sh after the autonomize and would just die the heavy slam and give it another and give it another boost and lose. So Blacephalon is the only play here, and I think with that intimidate, if he's bulky Blacephalon, he might be able to live an earthquake. Um, the thing is, I don't know if he's able to live a Z move. Like if it's deal Z move, if it's deal Z heavy slam, I think he can live that, and I think he can live a, a regular earthquake. But I don't think he can live a Z earthquake, so it just just depends for Eternum on what type of Celestia this is. Because if the Blacephalon really is Specs speed boost, and he gets rid of the Celestia here and it lives a hit and he gets a speed boost and he outspeeds the Landris afterwards and he can just clean sweep with, um, I don't know if he has Flamethrower and Fire Blast or if he only has Fire Blast. If he only has Fire Blast he has to hit multiple moves. But let's see, um, as he goes for a Z move which is ground so that's definitely gonna kill. Okay, so he, he fed early GG because he knew he had ground C. If he didn't have ground C, I think that could have lived potentially. Um, again, I would have to cut this right now and I don't really want to do that. But it was there was a fun game to watch. Uh, offensive Celestia is really cool. Like, nothing, not a, like, not a set you see much in the OU meta game. So that's definitely cool to see that from Eternal Spirit. I mean, at Team Preview, I thought it would be bulky and I thought the Z-move would be on the Kirm or on the Grand. But it turned out to be Battlebond Specs Grand, I think. I didn't run the card from... Greninja versus Hydreigon, but I think there was Specs Greninja damage, and Kyurem never came out, even though Kyurem was like a super threat and would have gotten the kill, pretty much, um, if he predicted correct, whenever it came out on the Tangrowth or kind of also beats the Heatran, eats any hit from Landris, eats any hit from Blaze probably, um, but yeah, the Blaze was definitely not max special attack, so I think it was a speed boosting variant, but yeah, thank you guys for watching, it was a fun match, and stay tuned for more. Smaller snack draft content, more ulti content. Um, yeah, I know I was gonna do some short on lives, but there are so many tournament games at the moment, I'm gonna focus on tournament games. But yeah, peace out, friends.